All right, so I'm live again, and I know a lot of you guys watched my last video where I did some resoldering on these Mackies here, um, and that got a pretty good amount of support, and actually a lot of people, I guess it helped. So we're gonna do another one where we're using the service manual to adjust the amp bias right here. So they've been sitting there for about uh, probably an hour and a half like this, and I played music through them pretty loud for a couple, about maybe 15, 20 minutes just to speed up the process, make sure that they're nice and toasty so the adjustment will work. So we're gonna go in and adjust this guy here, this guy here, and if we need to, there's a signal processor adjustment right, where is it here, I gotta find it. I think it's, it's hiding on the board right around in this area though. I believe it's, sometimes they move, they moved a little bit of it on the, between Italy and USA, but I know there's another one down here somewhere. Let's see if I can scroll in on this guy. But, let's see here, we are going to be, if the signal is not the same on all of them, we will adjust, the, I'm trying to find it, it might be this guy right here, uh, it's really hard to tell because the diagram is kind of blurry, but that's what we're going to be doing, and then we got the test points right here, so I had to kind of jury rig the multimeter, I sacrificed it and put this end on it that'll plug right into the board and read the voltage because we need to get it between uh, 4 to 4.5 millivolts, right somewhere in there. So this will just plug right into that test point on the board and show us where we're at. So now we're going to go ahead and grab one of these, throw it on the table and do this. And then uh, we got our assistant cameraman holding the live stream here. You can't trust me with anything. <laughs> All right. Flip the camera and sure, all right, here we go. So these should all be at about 50 degrees Celsius or so. Feel, I mean that feels pretty hot to me. I don't know. Feel that? I think that's about 122 degrees. What are you thinking? I don't know. How can you tell? Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's 122. Now well, it's about 120, but it'll work. I'm thinking. I don't know. A little dust in my mouth that might have corrupted the reading a little bit, but you know, <laughs> whatever. All right, so I'm gonna move my MacBook out of the way so I don't crush it. And the tricky part of this is, is we gotta remove the amp, but we have to keep the speaker wires connected and we have to turn the amp back on. So it says, you know, put it so the heat sinks are down or horizontal or whatever so they get hot. Uh, turn off the power, all that, remove it. But it says leave all the wires connected um, and then support the back of the amp so it can be turned back on. Then you gotta plug that in and adjust the potentiometers and uh, make it do stuff and work again. So, yeah. Let's do it. Ooh, the carpet's nice and warm right there. Toasty. <laughs> you should name them. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Carl, for keeping the carpet nice and toasty. Yeah. And we'll go with this guy here. So this is our super scientific drill bit extender thing here just to make sure that I don't smash the speakers cabinet in at all while I'm doing this. Let me just say he is he is my favorite nerd. Who me? Yep. Well thank you. Oh my favorite music nerd. <laughs> Drama geek. Yeah. I hope you guys are realizing how many tips I'm giving out. Because normally I charge people a couple hundred dollars to do anything on these speakers just because people will come out because nobody wants to get rid of these. So I hope you guys are appreciating this. The Mackies over there might pop when I do this sometimes. Nope, they're on a different circuit, I guess. So we're okay in that neck of the woods. So now you just got to remove all these nice screws. Just go in there. And we're testing this on a Mackie that already has some kind of stuff busted on it. This is just one of the backup Mackies. So um, that way if this first attempt doesn't go as planned or, you know, we do it wrong, we can learn by breaking a backup Mackie rather than a main. But they all need it done because they all are 
either playing too quiet or one of them's playing really distorted and loud and gets hot too fast, stuff like that. And that is all just these need to be readjusted, which happens over time. Right? These are really nice and hot. trying to think of the best plan of attack here on how to get the amp out and leave it connected because I think the speaker wires are on the top on this part of the amp so we need to see the transformers on this side which means the wires are on that side so we need to rotate it that direction I think that's our best way of doing it all right so what we'll do we're gonna rotate this guy around we'll put it like that and then hold the amp so nothing you know doesn't snag there you go. Boom. Like that. Good and done. So we're going to be adjusting these guys right here. And we are going to be plugging into test points. Where's our test point here? J21, I believe, is what we want for low frequency. Uh, yeah, J21. And over here we have probably J20, yep. So this is our high frequency. This is our woofer over here. So we're going to be adjusting these two guys. And then this is the signal processing I was telling you about. There's one here and one here, and that just adjusts how much signal is allowed in. Um, so if your Mackies are playing at different volumes, those are probably the culprits right there. But anyway, we'll start off with our high frequency. So you just plug your testing right into the board, flip this guy on, and now what we're going to do is so you need to get a power cord over here. Um, yeah, let's see how we're going to use this one right here. There's an extension cord sitting here, and we'll plug it in. And I probably should say, so I don't get in trouble if someone actually attempts this, unless you know exactly what the hell you're doing, I wouldn't do this, because you're going to have live 120 volt connections exposed right here and up here. So don't do this unless you absolutely know what you're doing, because it will hurt if you do this wrong. All right, so now we're going to turn it on and see what our reading is on the meter. We're at 1.7 millivolts. So that's an issue. <laughs> we need to be at 4.5. So this guy is running way, way, way too low, um, which is something you don't want at all. So we're going to go ahead and grab our toolkit here. And we're going to just get like a little uh, Phillips head screwdriver and we'll grab a couple of them just so we don't have to keep running back and forth. Find one that works the best. Mm, probably. I'm feeling pretty confident about these, this choice here. All right. So we'll go into here, and we can see we're rising up to about 2.1. And you're just going to very carefully, I guess that guy's way too tiny. So we'll use our flathead here. And then as you can see on the meter, see it went up to 3.9. Oh, now we're a little high. Just see little teeny bumps make that whole thing. There we are, 4.2. See that? That's where you want it. So now what you're going to do, before you... F I just about touched it. That would have sucked. Um, before you do anything else, you're going to go ahead, flip off the power, pull out your mains, wait for that to get back down to 0 or 0 0.1. It'll flicker around maybe. Um, then you unplug it. You don't want to unplug it while it's on just in case you get a spike. You don't want to kill your board. Then you're going to go right in here to... J21, and you're going to plug in your power again, flip it on, and we can see a pretty big problem there. Did you see how that, uh... alright, we have a really bad voltage drop. That needs to be up a pretty good amount higher, you see that? So that definitely why this one was sounding like crap. So this guy won't go up any farther. So that might mean we have a bad um, resistor or something on the board which would suck but hmm. let's see here yeah, we're not really getting past that amount. So 2.7 is exactly, that's about where it's stopping right now for us. 
Okay, well, let's see what we get now. If I restart it. Should level that. It needs to be leveled out right around. Now, oh, we're still really low. Well, I'm trying to think of anything that could be causing that. It may end up needing to just uh, unplugged into the right connector there. Yeah, J21. Hmm. Maybe one of these guys down here is bumped too. I'll mess with them to see what to... Uh... Yeah, that helped a little bit. Now we're up at 2.9, but still not ideally where we want it. But it is better than what it was. I'll give it that. Well, what I'm going to do for this guy then is I'm going to just turn it down a little bit. Just because I don't want it quite maxed out on those. That's kind of sketchy, but this one is just going to run low, I guess. Which is weird why it's doing that, but... Huh. Well, usually I love that bracelet. Oh, thank you. Alright, so I'm going to try, let's flip our polarity on the meter. Maybe we'll get a different reading then, but I'm not feeling too confident about it. Oh, let's see what's going on now. It's a reading. It's just negative now. It doesn't make really a big difference. 1.5. Do we get any change when we adjust our volume, though? No. Let's find out. Nope. So we're just going to be stuck with that guy like that. But that's all right. We will live with it. Like I said, this is a backup Mackie, so it's not too big of a deal. Um, but, you know, whatever. At least we've got our high frequency set, because these things I do use these with subs. So as long as the high frequency is good, we should be all right. Um, but this one's low frequency is just not going to run as efficiently. All right, and then we'll go on to the next one, and then we'll only live stream one more, uh, just because I'm pretty sure you guys would be able to get the hang of it now, but hopefully the next one will cooperate. That way you guys can at least see one that uh, the adjustment works correctly on. Boom. Right, and then we will grab the drill. And just stick this guy right back like that. We'll do one on Throw each those side. in there, yeah. <laughs> and our contour. I like to put these on contour mode. It sounds good. Mackie's getting drilled. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. Cool. Then we'll get the next one going. Oh, son of a gun. These little screws and these are heat sinks. These are the worst. Absolutely awful. Oh, Lord. I don't know. I thought it was like... yeah. Can't even get a shot of that. Oh, it's terrible. Nope. See, they just like fall. There's no space. Not at all. You gotta kind of get them in like that, two fingers, and then you can kind of do it. Can I get it? There we go. Uh, I might need there, had a little bit more left. You gotta drill them into. Oh, for goodness sake! This, see, like I said, here. This is kind of a fun trick, though. If you guys don't know, that irons off. If you do this with your drill bits on the bottom, of like a magnetic bowl, and it magnetizes them. It's kind of a good trick to know because now we should. 
stick it on the bit. Oh, you'll be able to drill it in better. Yep. That's the hope. And these screws are just not very magnetic. I'm going to do a couple more swipes on it. All right. Try that now. Is there a way to replace those screws with something uh, more easy to work with? On these? Yeah. No. So, yeah. Yeah. so that's it. Just gotta use the ones they come with. Yep. Oh, that's wonderful. And then again, you really sh never have to service these. Maybe once every 20 years is when you have to service them. So it's not horrible. Of a again, if you're not deal. buying new ones once every 20 years, it's probably a problem. They've got like really good speakers, but still. Yep. These Mackies I'll probably never get rid of, but they'll definitely will be a day when they stop going to gigs with me and they'll just uh, sit in the house. What kind, of, what kind of person are you if you if you don't update your equipment? You gotta, you know, if you if you can afford it, it's, then definitely. It's still go. Depends on what comes out though. These still might be the best speaker yeah. though. You never know. I mean, they'll they'll work for the house and stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, you know, if you're professionally going to gigs and and uh, yep. well, then it's different. Oh yeah, I know it. All right, let's go ahead and we'll run a quick audio test on just that one. Let's see what happens. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right, say hi. You're on a live stream. Hi. We're, we're, we're fixing speakers. Bro? Yeah. Hey, hey, Tyrese. What's up, Gabe? Hi, Tyrone. Mm. Oh. <laughs> All right, I'll call you later. Bye. 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 <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's funny. All right, so what we'll do is we'll just XLR jack on the back of this. You know how to hook these up. I don't think I have to show you guys. If you know how to repair these, you better know how to hook them up. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, Tyrese nice played Tyrone. I I played Thomas in the in the the Quinnicky Thanksgiving special. So. Yeah. He has nightmares. So do I. Yeah. All right. You ready? I got these fresh eyes. Never seen you. Oh, that already is much more crisp. Got it. Oh. All right, let's see. That's, that's the sound. Now I'm a stranger. I can't believe that she's mine. Let's get a before and after, actually. Same oh. song played through one that's not adjusted. Where were yet. these ones from? That one that one was a Washington one, actually. Really? Yeah. So, Seattle? Uh, Woodenville. Woodenville, all right. Yeah. All right. So what about this one? Same exact... This was in Italy. So this one... Oh, this theoretically one... Theoretically should have better sound, but since it's not adjusted yet, let's find out. Oh. Same volume, same song. Italy. <laughs> Oops. I got these fresh eyes. So that's the same song. Alright, so I'll get the cord right in the middle so I can switch it easier. I can tell that that one's not fair. We open the door for me. Got used to use your own. Alright, and then we'll put it in the other one. Stay we all typical man. You can definitely tell. All I see is you. Fresh eyes. You can tell it's probably a pretty significant difference in that. Right, right. I mean, it sounds. It's, this it's, one's more crisp. Yeah, that one's more crisp. There's less feedback. There's, I mean, less static. And. Uh, yep. But I mean, yeah. even even with that, it still sounds pretty good. Yep. But once we adjust it, it's going to sound amazing. Oh yeah. Especially because these are the Italy ones. And Italy's, oh my god. Uh, high standards. Really high here. standards. Okay, this one's uh, burning my tongue hot. This, uh, <laughs> that's a little bit, I think that's a little bit more than 122. Feel that. Here, let's take a look at your tongue. 
Uh, yeah, it's a little bit red now. Feel that. I think that's a little bit warmer than 122, if you ask me. You got a comment. Oh, we do. Always been scared to try adjusting bias and... Oh, yeah. So this is why you want to... Yeah, we just... If you watch back in the stream a little bit, we had a little bit of a weird reading on the other one, too. It uh, was maxed out, and it was only reading, like, what, 2.7, maybe 3? Yeah. And we need to get it to 4.5 millivolts. Um, but as you can tell, if you do it right and you know your stuff... The adjustment is very well worth it because, I mean, hell, you heard it. Um, and there's always, you can always knock it down a little bit. If you don't like it too crispy, maybe set it at about 4 volts rather than 4.5. Or 4 millivolts than 4.5, you know, stuff like that. Because uh, all you're really doing is you're just adjusting the, uh, I guess, how would you put it? Um, words just escaped my head. I'll think of it in a second. But you're, uh, yeah. The efficiency, that's what it is. That's what I was looking for. You're, hey. All you're doing is adjusting the efficiency of the amp. How efficient is it using its power? Is it using more power to process the signal, or are you using more power to push the driver? You know, so you're just basically lowering or hiring the voltage. That's, you know. So it's just basically a little volume knob. But if you turn it up too much, you're going to kill your speaker. If you don't turn it up enough and you try to push it, it's going to get staticky and crappy and... Nah. Yeah. You're still walking tech encyclopedia, aren't you? Yep. Oh yeah. All right, this guy's off. Yep. Same drill here. I don't know what it is, but this is so. Uh... Oh no, I messed up. There's one right here. There we are. Something about this is so satisfying watching this come out. Oh, I know. Isn't that weird? All right, so this one, as you can see, I'm very proud of this right here. Made in Italy. Not very many people have them. Uh, these wires are nice and flexible right now. That always kind of is scary. Cause it's been running for a while, though, so it makes sense. All right, and now we're going to go ahead and plug in our meter. It says, I've had a receiver that puts off hardly any heat at all. Wondering if the... Um, try to find a schematic sheet on it. Um, oh, hang on. I don't know what I just did to the live stream here. Um, okay, well, <laughs> I don't know what to do, hold on, oh, cancel, there it is, okay, sorry, I opened up something, alright, um, I'd look up the manual for it first and just kind of see where your, um, it's supposed to be running, see what test point it is, use the test points on it and, uh, I guess if you can find the voltage that's supposed to be across those test points, uh, plug it in and test it out before you adjust anything. Because if you crank it up, um, but if you're getting good sound out of it still, I wouldn't adjust it if you're still getting good sound. But if you are, if the sound of it seems like it's lacking quality, then maybe mess with it a little bit. All right, let's go. High frequency. We're at a two. That's not good. I want four. Well, I want six. But I'm not going to get a six. Okay, that didn't do anything. Oh, we're not getting very much voltage adjustment at all on this one. Oh, you know why? Oh, it worked so well for the other one. You know why? Why? J20's not down here anymore. They moved it. This I is, love when people do that. This is J20. Italy ones were different. Oh. Now we should be getting a little bit of a different reading when we crank this. Oh yes. Oh shit. We're running at. We just ran about 21 volts on or 21 millivolts on that circuit. Said it's older. Very 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 touchy. Uh, we had a comment. Older stuff is harder to find schematics for. At times, uh, I'd almost argue for some equipment it's easier, just because a lot of companies nowadays don't release schematics because they don't want you to fix it. They want you to buy a new one. All right, we hit an even four volts. I am perfectly happy with that result. Four millivolts. Yay, Italy! Uh -huh. Pop. <laughs> These ones always had a little pop noise they do. It's funny. All right. Boom. We'll go to our... Damn it. We'll go to our other test point here. We're going to go to our damn it? Yeah. Oh, I love that place. I love that damn place. Is that that place that sells donuts? Yep. Sweet. All right. And... Boom. Let's go for it. We are running... Really? Point nine. 
Oh my the god. What happened? These are running very inefficiently. What is that screwdriver? It's magic. Yeah. Is there um, any difference? Not really. Oh. It's very touchy. Just barely bump it, and look at that. Boom! Even, well, well, I'm still happy with it. 4 and 4.1. I'd say that's a success. Now, you're supposed to be gluing these as you go to, so they don't get bumped, because sometimes just a... See that? See that right there? 4.2. Right, but if that... If you glue them, then if it happens again, there's no way to fix it, right? You just put nail polish on them. It yeah. says to do it right there. It says, uh, when finished adjusting, use a small drop of paint, such as nail varnish. Um, Doesn't that make it harder to work with, though? Not really. It already had some on there, as you can kind of see. This is this little white crap, like the other one you saw the red. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay, so we, we should get a starting voltage of about... It, it shouldn't go higher than 99. I was wondering about... It be oxidized when you turn them and spike the yes um, they do spike when you turn them on as you can see right here um, watch the meter it hits a quick little 7 or whatever and then goes down um, and then you'll see it hit 3.6 but it should yep see it'll start climbing back up as it heats up see that now we're hitting 3.8 3.9 and we should get about a 4 here soon yep there oh yeah so we're running okay on there. I'm gonna wait for the pop. Um, a lot of times with these, just be very careful. You'll know if something goes wrong. Uh, most of the time, you won't kill the amp when you adjust them. But uh, if you suddenly get a high reading, uh, like these have a pretty big tolerance. These can handle up to like you know 30 millivolts for 10 seconds or so. So if you accidentally bump it, you have enough time to turn it back down before you actually do damage and a lot of amps are like that so if you see a quick spike and you can't get it to go back down just turn off the power and then replace the um, bias adjuster it's, I mean that's pretty much I mean it's a pain in the butt because they're so small but it's better than killing your stuff alright so this guy is adjusted we're gonna go ahead and this is at 4 and 4 which is perfect reading uh, they say to adjust between 4 and 4.5 like we said so now that we have one that's actually a perfect adjustment, I can't wait to hear how this one sounds compared to the other one that wasn't able to be adjusted right. This should be interesting. This is the first Mackie I owned. This is number one. This is the original. And this one is having some issues with over excursion on the woofer and stuff too, so that might, maybe it'll have fixed that. Oh shit, you see that? Stripped out the screw. Be careful using a drill on these. Alright, well. What would you recommend when, uh. When what? With, when with these? Uh, if I wasn't such a lazy piece of crap, I'd be using a screwdriver and doing it by hand. Um, which is what I you should do. Uh, some say clean the, fir the pots first. Eh. I'd say that you're honestly going through more trouble doing that than you would be if you accidentally turned it up too high and killed something to replace it. I mean, honestly, you're going to be risking more damage than good doing that because, you know, if that gets in there and you make the adjustment before it dries or anything like that, you're going to get a spike and that will definitely kill it. Um, and a lot of those are so sealed up anyway and they've never been moved before so there's not going to be any crap in them anyway. So I'd just do the adjustment before, you know... That's what I would do anyway. If you can, I'd just adjust it like that. There we go. And we got three screws left after this one here. So we'll go. Um, and we got our bottom three. Coming out of I'm it. working on three to forty year old equipment. A little different. A little different than newer stuff. Yes, it is definitely. Even working on these is different than newer stuff. Because the newer ones have a switching power supply and they're hard so they're just hard soldered resistors. They're not adjustable now. So if you get one that overheats, you just gotta send it back to the manufacturer. There's no use in even trying, honestly, with the new stuff. Like this was the generation of stuff, like the last generation of stuff made to last, basically some plastic burrs coming around this screw. I don't really like that. 
kind of clean them off a little bit. There we go. All right, flip it on, plug this in. Now that we have the new, not the new, but the uh, newly adjusted, I should say. Okay, plugged into my laptop, and we will hit the song. I got these fresh eyes, never seen you before. Definitely better. I got you beautiful, superficial, damn. So suddenly, I'm in love with a stranger. try one more song just to make sure we're actually good in here. This one's supposed to test everything. The bubbling in the cut really good on highs and stuff. Alright. I'd call that a success. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that sounds uh, very nice. Um, and I will let you guys know how they do after the adjustment because since they were running low, I'm assuming they weren't getting as hot. So we will see if they uh, end up thermaling out at a gig or something and we'll keep everyone updated. Um, this is why for the next gig I do with them, I'm going to have two of them there with me as backup. So if something happens, I can quickly just swap out. Um, but yeah, I think we could probably... Uh, end of the stream now if we want to because you guys have already seen it done on two um but uh, yeah we'll see you guys next time if you have any more questions or anything about these or anything related uh just leave them in the comments and uh, i'll reply to as many as i can i'll see you guys next time